In this video, I'm going to take a look at the components, connections, and operating modes that make up the simple cooling system of my 2 litre Duratec catering. I've been working on these animations for over four years, and it's about time I put this project to bed before I get back to my EV stuff again. This isn't going to be an in-depth technical video, and I'm going to take some liberties with the 3D models I'll use, but hopefully it's informative. OK, so why is all this cooling needed? Burning carbon-based fuels to get you from A to B is inefficient, producing huge amounts of waste heat. And the more power the engine is producing, the more waste heat it creates. Much of it is excess energy that needs to be removed from the engine before it causes problems. So a cooling system is needed to keep the engine temperatures in check and for the engine to be working at its optimum Goldilocks temperature, not too hot and not too cold. So let's get a bit more into the weeds by listing all the different components, coolant loops and operating modes. Probably the most important component in the cooling system is the thermostat. The thermostat is a temperature controlled valve that sits at the engine's coolant input and governs which cooling loops are flowing at any particular temperature. In my very crude kitchen oven tests, when gradually heated, the thermostat starts to operate at about 92 degrees C and is fully open by 108 degrees. When gradually cooled, the thermostat remains partially open all the way down to about 85 degrees. A small impeller-based water pump is set next to the thermostat and is driven off the engine ancillary belt. Higher engine revs mean more coolant flowing and therefore more cooling. The main coolant radiator is what transfers excess heat energy from the engine into the air flowing through the car. Air is either forced through the matrix when the car is moving, or if the car isn't going fast enough, then a fan is used to provide airflow. A critical component in the cooling system is the expansion tank, which has three broad uses, trapping any gases that build up in the coolant, allowing space for coolant to expand into as it heats up, and providing a pressure release valve in its cap. The optional fit cabin heater takes heat out of the coolant and dumps it into the cabin using a small radiator and fan. Not all caterums have a cabin heater fitted. There are all sorts of upgrades you can do to the coolant system pipework, but I'll keep it simple here and just say that each pipe presents a sort of resistance to flow. So the diameter and length of the pipes are important to get the correct flow and therefore cooling effect in each loop of the coolant system. The coolant in a modern car is a mixture of deionized water and glycol, all together often just called antifreeze. OK, let's now look at how all these bits and pieces are connected to form four mostly parallel loops. We have a main loop, expansion loop, radiator loop, and recirculating loop. First up, we have what I'll call the main loop. And like all the loops, it takes coolant from the rear of the engine and then feeds it back into the front, in this case, via a T-piece and the thermostat housing. The main loop is a critical part of the fail-safe design of the system, making sure coolant always flows through the engine, even if another component, such as the thermostat, fails. The continuously running main loop can include an optional fit cabin heater. The recirculating or bypass loop is a simple, single pipe connection, feeding coolant back into the engine at the back of the thermostat. This loop only operates when the engine is being warmed, usually from startup in the warm up mode. The expansion tank loop runs continuously along with the main loop and feeds coolant into the thermostat housing, but this time via an expansion tank. This is another important fail-safe design, making sure there's no trapped gas in the system and no situation where the system can become overpressurized. Finally, we get to the main event and the real workhorse of the coolant system, the radiator loop. The main coolant radiator is what transfers excess heat energy from the engine into the air flowing through the car. 
It's a matrix of cooling pipes that has cooling fins placed between the pipes. And as air passes through the matrix, heat is exchanged from the coolant into the air. Air is either forced through the matrix when the car is moving, or if the car isn't going fast enough, then a fan is used to provide airflow. So, there are a bunch of coolant components that make up the four different coolant loops, or circuits. The main and expansion loops run all the time, while the recirculating and radiator loops are controlled by the thermostat. This all then operates in three cooling modes. Warm-up, normal operating mode, and forced air mode. As the car is started from cold, we want to get the engine up to its optimum operating temperature as quickly as possible. This is the warm-up mode. So the recirculating loop runs along with the main and expansion loops. The recirculating loop feeds increasingly hotter coolant from the rear of the engine directly back into the front of the engine, speeding up the engine heating from cold, amplifying the heat. Once the engine coolant is up to its operating temperature, we're into the normal operating mode, where the thermostat extends and contracts as the coolant temperature rises and falls under different engine loads, allowing more or less coolant to flow in the radiator loop. More coolant flowing in the radiator increases the cooling effect and draws more heat energy from the coolant. Finally, there's what I'm calling a forced cooling mode. This is when the coolant temperatures get to where the thermostat has opened fully and the ECU's only option for keeping temperatures in check is to turn on the fan, which, if everything is working properly, should mean only at low vehicle speeds. The cooling system is designed with thermostat pipes, pump and radiator, able to dissipate all the heat the engine can produce, even on a track. On a standard Duratec 7, the fan is set to come on at around 105 degrees C, when the thermostat just hits its maximum extension. So this would normally only need to happen at traffic lights, around town, or coming into the pits after a track session. And that's how my engine's cooling works. We've looked at one of the simplest cooling systems you can find in the car, still sold new for the public roads. We looked at the components, how they're connected together, and how they operate to keep the car's engine running in its Goldilocks zone. It's an ingenious system that has been around for many decades, perfectly good enough to keep Goldilocks happy and the three bears wondering what happened to their porridge. For more videos like this, please like and subscribe, and as always, happy blatting.